The monosynaptic reflex arc is variously referred to as the stretch, deep tendon, or myotatic reflex, and it is the basis of the knee, ankle, jaw, biceps, or triceps response tested in a routine physical examination. These reflexive responses are too rapid for involvement of the brain and are mediated by the local circuitry within the spinal cord. The sensory signal for the stretch reflex originates in muscle spindles, the sensory receptors embedded within most muscles. The spindles comprise 8 to 10 intrafusal fibers arranged in parallel with the extrafusal fibers. The extrafusal muscle fibers make up the bulk of the muscle and are innervated by alpha motor neurons. There are two structural and functional classes of intrafusal fibers the nuclear bag fibers, and the nuclear chain fibers. These fibers differ in the position of their nuclei, the intrinsic architecture of their myofibrils, and their dynamic sensitivity to stretch. Large diameter sensory axons, group 1A and group 2 afferents, are coiled around the intrafusal fibers. These afferents are the largest axons in peripheral nerves. Because action potential conduction velocity is a direct function of axon diameter, these fibers mediate very rapid reflex adjustments when the muscle is stretched. The stretch imposed on the muscle deforms the intrafusal muscle fibers. In the afferent axon endings coiled around the spindle, mechanically gated ion channels become activated, initiating action potentials in these neurons. Group 1A afferents, which preferentially innervate nuclear bag fibers, respond phasically to small stretches, while Group 2 afferents, which innervate both fiber types, signal the level of sustained stretch by firing tonically in proportion to the degree of stretch. Small gamma motor neurons modulate the level of excitability of the muscle spindles. The sensory neurons form monosynaptic excitatory connections with the alpha motor neurons in the ventral horn of the spinal cord that innervate the same homonymous and synergist muscles. The sensory neurons also innervate local circuit neurons that form inhibitory connections with the alpha motor neurons of antagonistic muscles. The monosynaptic pathway from the spindle to the alpha motor neuron is unusual. Most sensory neurons from the periphery do not contact the lower motor neuron directly, but instead exert their effects through local circuit neurons. When the muscle is stretched, the afferent volley from the muscle spindle is relayed to the alpha motor neurons, and an efferent volley returns to the muscle. Since muscles are always under some degree of stretch, this reflex circuit is normally responsible for the steady level of tension in muscles, called muscle tone. When the muscle shortens, the spindle is relieved of tension, or unloaded, and the sensory axons that innervate the spindle might therefore be expected to stop reporting information about muscle length. However, gamma motor neurons become activated at the same time. These neurons terminate on the contractile poles of the intrafusal fibers, causing them to contract, thereby maintaining the tension on the central region of the intrafusal fibers where the sensory axons terminate. Thus, coactivation of the alpha and gamma motor neurons allows spindles to function at all muscle lengths during movements and postural adjustments.